Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a micro brand watch that has some of the best finishing, the best specifications, and the best loom of any watch that I've tested. Today we're taking a look at the SWC Mark II Diver. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, I live in Japan, and I love to collect affordable watches. Now, a few months ago, I did a loom challenge where I rounded up some of the best loomed watches that I could find. And one of the watches that I really wanted to test and include in that was the SWC Mark II Diver. I had previously reviewed their Mark I Diver, which had excellent loom, but I heard on the Mark II they actually increased it. So I wanted to get that one in here uh, for that loom challenge. And I figured while I had the Mark II in hand, I'd go ahead and do a quick kind of update because again, I've reviewed the Mark I before. I wanna talk about the changes between that one and this one. This is a watch that has a really elegant look. It is a large watch with a lot of wrist presence coming in at 44 millimeters in diameter, but it still manages to wear very comfortably on the wrist. And it's surprisingly affordable for a Swiss made watch with these specifications. So specifications and dimensions on this, it does come in at 44 millimeters on the case. You can about a 49 and a half millimeters lug to lug, 22 millimeter lug openings for straps. It's about 13 and a half millimeters thick. You get 300 meters of water resistance and inside you have a Salida SW200 Swiss automatic movement. Now the Mark II version is available on either a silicone strap or on a steel bracelet. If you get it on the silicone strap, it's $445. If you get it on the bracelet, it's $495. Now the one that I have in for review here today is on the silicone strap. The previous one that I reviewed is on the bracelet. The bracelet is excellent quality. It complements the watch really well and it features a tool-free micro-adjust clasp. If you wanna get a closer look at that, you can see my previous reviews. And the silicone bracelet was something I was really interested in seeing because the stainless steel bracelet to me was a really integral part of the original watch. And even though I love to change out straps, I pretty much always keep it on that bracelet because I feel like it just matches the watch so well. So I was curious to see what they would do with the silicone strap and if that was like something that would be worthwhile to get or if you should just skip it all together and go straight to the bracelet. But I was pleasantly surprised with it. The silicone strap is custom fitted to the watch, so it kind of molds around the lug openings without leaving any gaps for a really sleek, clean look. It's also incredibly comfortable on the wrist. Now this is a large watch, it's fairly heavy, so being able to get a good comfortable fit with the silicone bracelet really, I think, increases the comfort of this watch, and it still looks really good as well. Silicone has an incredibly soft and supple feel to it, and while the downside often is that it attracts a lot of dust, this one isn't too bad. It does attract more dust than a standard rubber strap would, uh, but it does have an additional degree of comfort as well. They've also included a really cool deployment clasp on the strap, which gives the watch kind of a more premium feel. And that's something that's kind of echoed throughout every aspect of this watch. This watch is assembled and built in Switzerland. It's finished to a very high standard and the components that they've used inside are all very high quality. You're getting a sapphire crystal with a ceramic bezel. The ceramic bezel has kind of a Rolex Yachtmaster kind of vibe to it with these polished numerals and markers that really kind of sparkle and reflect the light. And the sapphire crystal is domed with a healthy amount of anti-reflective undercoating on it, so you get a pretty clear look down into the dial. And the dial is another area that has been changed up since the Mark I. The Mark I had this kind of square texture in the middle of it that did add some visual interest, but it also, I felt, looked kind of awkward. They've gone with kind of a much cleaner, simpler sort of sunburst look on it. This is the brown dial version, which has a nice sheen to it, kind of a chocolate or coffee color. And when you look at the markers, you would almost think that they're applied markers because they're so tall. They have this, they really pop off the dial, but they're not, they're actually painted on there. The reason they look so tall is because they just have so many layers of loom. And this is Swiss Superluminova X1 grade loom. So particularly the dial markings are some of the brightest dial markings that I've ever tested on a watch. And while the hands aren't as bright, they also feature a very heavy amount of this Swiss Superluminova X1, which gives you excellent readability after dark. On my J-Score system, this watch scored a 12, which means it's about 20% brighter than a Seiko Samurai. And the things that that scoring system takes into consideration is the average brightness of the hands and the markers after one hour. So it doesn't factor in the size of the loomed area, which also plays a big role in legibility. This watch has really huge loom plots, which makes it even more easy to read after dark. Overall, it's an incredibly long lasting and impressive display of loom. Before we go any further, let me remind you to please check out my website. You can pick up this t-shirt there, along with a lot of other kind of cool watch-themed designs I put together. Just go to justthewatch.com. 
pick one up, help support the channel. But overall, SWC is one of my favorite micro brands out there. I feel like they really bring something special and unique to the table in the expertise that they have and their ability to manufacture watches in Switzerland for a really reasonable price. They're able to do this because the owner of the brand grew up in Switzerland working for the Swatch Group in quality control, so he really knows his stuff. He's since moved to the United States and started a family business making watches. A lot of his sons are involved in different aspects of it, including one of his sons who is a watchmaker in Switzerland. It gives them some really unique advantages that no other micro brand has. And I think that really comes through in the quality control and the finishing and their after sales support that they're able to offer you. As far as potential negatives on this watch go, size is an issue. This is a very large watch, so if you have smaller wrists, it might not wear too well. However, the lug to lug is not overly large at 49 and a half millimeters. So on average size wrists, you should be able to still get away with it, but it is a substantial watch and you can definitely feel it on the wrist. Another thing to keep in mind is that the lug holes are very tight to the case. So it does tend to limit the strap options that you can put on it. I think SWC includes a set of curved spring bars, which should help with that. But without those curved spring bars, you're gonna have a hard time fitting this on a NATO strap or on a thick rubber strap other than the supplied one. Finally, I mentioned this in kind of all of my SWC reviews, but I'm not a huge fan of their logo, and I know a lot of people have pointed that out as being something that kind of turns them off a bit. Anyways, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'll leave a link to SWC as well if you want to check out their stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.